got five in already. Hello, everyone. Hi, John. Hey, welcome. People are uh, people are coming in. Morning, Mike. Good morning, Helen. <laughs> Howdy, Kyle. Zach, Paul, everybody's coming in. Awesome. You guys are all pros at this, know how to use the chat box. <laughs> Morning, Michael. James. We're going to get going in just a minute here. People are still kind of getting in. I'm just going to give it one more minute. Hope everyone's doing well and enjoying some of the nice weather that we have here. Hurricanes have passed by and everyone's uh, safe and well. We're gonna we're gonna get started, and uh, hopefully, uh, we'll if we get a few more people joining in, they can uh, catch up. Um, so, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, John Higo with the Lumicare Group, and uh, we're going to be talking to you about the Lumismart Merlin system today. Um, and uh, I'm joined by uh, Raymond Josephian and Anthony Lacaruba. Uh, Raymond and Anthony will be rocking the chat box and answering all your questions as we go along. Hopefully. Um, feel free to stick up your hand if you uh, uh, like as well. Um, we'll try to get to all the chats. Uh, Raymond and Anthony will try to get to all the questions in the chat box as we go. Uh, but if they miss anything, or um, we'll try and get uh, to some at the end as well. Um, and uh, they might uh, interject into the, uh, the presentation and ask questions as we go along as well. So uh, Raymond, Anthony, say hello. Hi, everyone. Hey, everybody. How are you us? All right. Um, so let's, uh, let's get started here. Hopefully, everyone can uh, see my screen here. So we're going to start talking about the, uh, the Merlin, um, uh, the Illumismart Merlin system. And there's four main components of the, uh, of the system, uh, the, the heart of it being the Merlin RX, the Merlin receiver. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, RX uh, with the antenna, very simple to connect. You've got uh, input side, output side, two wires uh, each side. Now, the thing about the Merlin, uh, what makes this uh, significantly different than any other system out there, this is um, powered by uh, the 12 volt side. So it not only controls the secondary side of the transformer to allow you zoning on a single transformer, but it's also powered by 12 volts. So you can put it anywhere in line that you already have a 12 volt line. So if you've got an existing system that you're gonna retrofit, uh, this is the ideal solution. You don't have to run new wires back to the transformer just to control a new zone. Um, so that's the Merlin RX is the main component. Um, you also have the Merlin TX. So the Merlin TX allows you manual control by radio frequency 
of the Merlin RX. And the radio frequency is at a distance. We rate it at a thousand feet line of sight. We've actually tested it over 1500 feet um, and through walls. Um, so I've had the, the unit, uh, the Merlin hub unit, uh, or the, the TX in my office here and down the street behind a hotel um, and had the signal coming in. Um, so th that's uh, the Merlin TX. So the TX is manual control on the RF side. The Merlin RX will work um, as a standalone unit on Wi-Fi as well. Um, so if you just want Wi-Fi control on your phone, uh, the Merlin RX, uh, just plug it in, connect it to the Illumismart app, and you get uh, Wi-Fi uh, zone control. Now, promise people on, online that I was gonna get into this. Uh, so when you're setting up the Merlin uh, as a Wi-Fi, uh, only. One of the key things is to make sure that you have a good Wi-Fi platform to work with. So I'm going to go through how to um, kind of do a site survey on a Wi-Fi system to make sure that you've got adequate signal strength to actually run the system and run it well. So you know ahead of time um, if you need to make any adjustments. Uh, let me just go back here in my screen. So with the Merlin RX uh, connected to Wi-Fi, I'm going to share a different screen here and go to my phone. There we go. Can you all see that? Um, so if you have uh, Android uh, system that uh, I'm using here, um, I use an app called the Wi-Fi Analyzer. And this app is, is excellent for this. Uh, to see if you have a good Wi-Fi signal. You can't really tell by the bars at the top of the phone. There's no um, uh, necessarily logic to that. Three bars might be good, three bars uh, might, might not. So um, this will actually show you your, um, your real signal strength. So if you can see my, my screen there, this red line here, this is the, the Wi-Fi signal that I'm on. Um, and uh, I've got a good strong signal. It's greater than a minus 40. So this is kind of like wire gauge and that the, the lower number, the bigger the gauge, the lower the number um, of your Wi-Fi signal, the stronger the signal. So uh, minus 40 is excellent. Uh, in order to program these units, you wanna be minus 60, minus 65 or better uh, to actually program the units. They'll operate in the minus 85 range. Um, but you need to get them into the minus 60, minus 65 to program. I was on a job a couple of years ago. Um, we had uh, three of the Merlin RXs in a um, pool shed. Uh, they didn't get a good enough signal there to do the programming. So we just took them up to the back deck closer to the house, did the programming there, installed them in the pool shed, and uh, they're, they're working fine on the minus 85 signal. But you need that minus 60 to minus 65 um, to, to get a, a good enough signal for the programming. So minus 40 were excellent. The one thing that you see here um, that, uh, and one of the reasons I love this app, you see this blue line. That's another Wi-Fi signal coming from somebody else's uh, router. And I've also got all these down here. We're all on channel 11. We're all using the same channel. This could be an issue, especially if your signal is weaker than the, um, the other ones that are on the channel, you can get some interference on the Wi-Fi channel. So I'd recommend here is switching uh, your Wi-Fi channel on the router or having the homeowner switch it, have their IT guy uh, and switch it to a different channel, channel three, channel six, um, something where you're not getting so many competing signals, especially really strong ones. Now, uh, might be getting ahead of some people. I'm gonna just throw out a quick uh, poll here and uh, see if I'm kind of uh, talking, uh, you know, a, a little bit too technical for people. So is that poll up in uh, your screen, sir? Yes, John, it is. Awesome.
John, while we are waiting for uh, uh, for uh, our guests to answer on the poll, uh, Zach asked a question, and uh, the question was, as far as our uh, receiver goes, is there a minimum, maximum voltage that it would run on? We rate it at 9 to 15 volts, AC or DC. Thank you, sir. John, one more. Um, Rhonda Thomas has her uh, hand raised for a question. Okay. Let me, uh, sorry, I'm trying to get that on the screen. Uh, looks like I can't do that when the poll is up. Raymond or Anthony, can you click on that and? Uh, Oh, Rhonda Thomas didn't mean to raise her hand. <laughs> Hi, Rhonda. All right, so uh, looking at the poll here, I'm gonna end this here. And results here. So most of you, uh, great. Most of you know the difference between a router and a modem. Uh, we got uh, one tech savvy person here, speaks TCP IP, awesome. And uh, Nobody that the uh, uh, Sheldon, Howard, and Leonard, and Raj would bow before. So that's uh, that's okay. So uh, if I'm going here, I'm hoping you're all getting this. Um, you don't have to be an expert in this to um, you know to set this up, um, but you do need to get a basis for uh, the Wi-Fi signal. Make sure you have a good enough signal strength. And um, you know the competing um, Wi-Fi signals. Look for that. Now, if you're on uh, Apple, um, it's not as easy. Uh, Android has a, a, a few great apps for uh, analyzing Wi-Fi signals. If you're on Apple, you need to um, you need to use the uh, airport utility. And let me just bring this up here. Hopefully this is gonna work. Always works in practice. And everybody see my iPhone screen there? Awesome. Um, and I'm clicking on the screen here, it's not working because it's on my phone. Uh, so airport utility, this is the only thing that you can use on an Apple device that will measure the Wi-Fi signal. Uh, so you have to download the app, uh, airport utility, it's an Apple app. Uh, and then in the top right corner there, click on the Wi-Fi scan. <clears throat> um, and this will tell you all basically all of the, uh, the, the signals in the area. So you get the same kind of information here. Uh, just not graphically represented. So you can see at the top there, that's the one I'm on, the Bell 850A, and I've got a good signal um, down around the minus 40. Um, but you see that other one that's uh, the direct YD, I'm not even sure whose that is, but uh, almost equivalent signal strength in the same channel. Uh, so it's not gonna be back and forth there from the top spot. That would be something I'd be concerned about, and I'd want to um, you know, go to the neighbors and ask them to move there change the channel on their Wi-Fi. Um, or maybe you can just change the channel on yours. If you have cooperating neighbors, that would be great. Um, but change the channel on the Wi-Fi, make it on something that uh, you're not getting a strong a, a competing signal on just to minimize your problems down the road. Uh, so, the, that's uh, if you're connecting the Merlin RX on Wi-Fi, you need the good signal strength. It's just like any other Wi-Fi device um, that you need a good signal strength. All the Wi-Fi smart sockets and uh, switches, um, they all need a good signal strength. So this is a, a good exercise to learn how to make sure these are going to work. Um, now, with the Merlin uh, system, because we know that Wi-Fi is a limitation, and because we have a dual radio in this receiver, this receiver has the Wi-Fi uh, radio signal receiver, and it also has the, uh, the RF radio receiver that we can use the transmitter to go a thousand feet line of sight. We created the Merlin hub, which is a hybrid and blends these two technologies. 
So the Merlin hub goes anywhere in the house where you have a good Wi-Fi signal. It doesn't have to connect directly to the router, um, be wired indirectly, just a good Wi-Fi signal anywhere in the house. And then this transmits radio frequency to the Merlin RX. So you get the benefits of the long range of the, uh, the RF signal with the convenience of the programming of the Wi-Fi. So a blended, uh, a blended uh, Wi-Fi and uh, RF um, system. So there may be jobs that uh, you, you have. Um, and uh, for any that was on the uh, IA AOLP conference, um, our friend Carl did uh, uh, talked about some of the jobs that he's used uh, the Merlin on. And one of them was uh, this property here <clears throat> where the um, it, it was a cottage and they didn't have Wi-Fi, uh, but they wanted to be able to control. They wanted to be able to turn on the lights when they were coming in across the lake. They wanted to be able to turn on the lights when they were coming in the driveway, um, but they had no Wi-Fi in, in, in the cottage. Uh, so they just wanted a simple system, long range, um, that, would, uh, that would work reliably. Uh, so the Merlin RX with the Merlin uh, TX transmitter uh, was uh, the perfect solution here and uh, worked really well for them, either coming in off the boat or coming in, uh, in, in the driveway to be able to turn their lights off and on. The other uh, scenario is, is something like this here, where you have uh, an existing system. Um, <clears throat> and again, they, what they, it was an existing system, but they wanted to break it up into different zones. They didn't want to have all of the lights on all of the time. Uh, they already had a transformer mounted. They already had the job wired. Um, so without doing any rewiring, uh, enter the Merlin, uh, the Merlin Wi-Fi system. And you can just put the receiver anywhere in line to control. Uh, and I think they had five zones going here um, to control different zones of lights and have them on different schedules, if you like. Um, so you're getting a, a hybrid system. Uh, you're getting the wi convenience of the Wi-Fi with the distance of the uh, radio frequency, if you need it. Um, a lot of times the Merlin uh, RXs will work natively just on, on the Wi-Fi um, and uh, uh, you know, broadcast a, a across with no problem. Um, but the, the, the real key things is that it um, uh, operates on the 12 volt side and is powered by 12 volts. So it can really go anywhere uh, in line. If you have a barbecue, uh, that you want to control a single light for the barbecue. If you have a gazebo that you uh, want to control the lights for and it's already wired up, uh, you can just mount that Merlin RX right on the side of the uh, gazebo uh, with the, the line running up and control that, uh, control that line. So I'm going to get into a little bit of the, uh, of, of the app and uh, showing you the, uh, some different things in the Lumismart app. Um, these aren't necessarily specific to the Merlin, um, but uh, it is. Uh, um, it will show you how to do some of the the, the programming. Right. So let's go back to my phone. And we'll go into the Illumis Smart app. There we go. So everybody got that uh, app up on their screen there. So a couple of things with the uh, with the app. Um, there's there's a lot that you can do with it, and I'll tell you kind of how I would use it if I was a contractor as well, because there's. Uh, uh, some things with setting up families and setting up administrators and uh, and, and that uh, that each um, uh, that you know will, will help you when you're setting up for. So uh, I have behind me here, and uh, let me just turn off my my background here so you can see what's behind me because I'm not sitting on. Uh, 
back patio with a, a pool behind me, unfortunately. There we go. So uh, my, my little uh, test board that I have uh, set up back here, um, and uh, I guess you're looking in the, the, the little screen there. Um, but I have a, uh, let me just uh, stop sharing for a sec so you can see that uh, a little bit better. Is that, so what I have is basically the, the Merlin RX just wired uh, directly into uh, transformer. So the input side, um, goes directly into the transformer, powering by the 12 volt. And then I've got the output side connected to our uh, Rowan fixture here. Um, and then just controlling through the app, I'm gonna switch back over and uh, go to the app now. There we go. Um, so I just go into the app, I go into the, the Merlin, um, and I can, I get that light going off and on. <clears throat> and once I have it in the app, I can do this. I could be sitting, um, you know, with, uh, uh, with, with Paul down there having a beer on the patio in, in, in Texas and Paul could be cooking me a steak and I could be controlling my lights up here, uh, you know, in my office in, in Canada. So um, adding the devices to the app, uh, you know, really simple. Um, you just go up to the top right corner, uh, hit the plus sign, and you get into adding an app. Uh, so the Merlin hub, you add in as a switch. Um, the, uh, the, our smart sockets, you add in as a, as a Wi-Fi socket. Um, and I can go through that if, uh, if anybody wants, if we have time we should maybe have time for that uh, in a bit but I'll go through a few more things in the app first uh, you can see also here I have the Merlin hub on my app uh, so if I click on the hub I've got six zones on the hub uh, now each zone can have multiple receivers if you need um, but I've got six zones on the app and uh, so I've got my hot tub there um, that's uh, controlling the Going behind me through the Merlin uh, hub. So I can control the device directly because I've got a good enough Wi-Fi signal, but I can also control it uh, through the hub. So you, you can do that uh, and have them in both ways in, in your app, the, the one device. So with the Merlin, let me carry Merlin down there in the middle, that's going in direct Wi-Fi to, uh, to the Merlin RX, or I can control it through the Merlin hub and that's using radio frequency. Now, um, <clears throat> I'll go through setting up automations because that's uh, that's an important part to, in this, um, and then I'll talk about how to uh, um, how to set up families and uh, how I would use the app um, were I a contractor. So, excuse me, to set up uh, automations to set it up for sunrise, sunset, that kind of thing. Uh, you go to the smart button in the middle at the bottom there. <clears throat> and um, hit the plus at the, uh, sorry, click on automations there. And you see, I've got a few programmed in already, uh, but hit the plus at the top right, to add a new automation. Um, so you can set it up for different things. Uh, you can set it up on a schedule, um, you know, coming on at eight o'clock, going off at 11 o'clock and set up on a schedule like that. Uh, you click when the weather changes, you can set it up. This is where you set up the sunrise sunset. Um, so you can go in here, set it up for, uh, if I wanted a program to come on at, at sunrise or go off at sunrise, you can use uh, that there. So, um, excuse me, go back in here. And then there's a schedule there that you can set. Um, if you just want it to come on at a certain time. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to say sunrise, sunset. So at sunset, and uh, this is coming up here, and you can see this. Um, you can set it for, um, you know, a five, 10 minutes, a delay either before or after sunset, um, depending on where you are. You know, if, the, if, if you don't like where the app sets it, some people want their light to come on a little early, some come on a little later. 
Um, also, this is used for, um, so if you, when you see here, I have uh, this set up. So I have a, um, a Wi-Fi smart socket in my transformer, turning the transformer on. Until the transformer is turned on, I can't get my, uh, my Merlin RX. Um, so if I had them both to come on at sunset, um, the signal might not get to the Merlin RX because it wouldn't be on yet until this turns on. So I would set a schedule for the transformer to turn on at sunset and my Merlin RX to turn on at five minutes after sunset uh, to control that zone. So you can see how that, can, uh, that automation can be used. So I'm gonna go sunset, uh, five minutes after sunset, save that and go to the next. And then I'm gonna set up the task. So I'm gonna say, I wanna run the device. I want the Illumicare Merlin and I want that to turn on and save that. So now I've got my condition five minutes after sunset, the Illumicare Merlin turns on and effective period all day. Um, so you can click on this and then repeat every day. You can have different schedules for different times of di uh, different days of the week. So you could have one schedule for uh, weekends, one schedule for during the week. Um, great for cottage areas. Uh, so you can set that up in there next. And then um, I'm going to save this. Okay. So now I've got a new automation. I actually should have changed the name on that. So we're gonna edit that and we're just gonna change the name. That's uh, kind of a long name there. And we'll just call this test one. There we go. So we now have the new automation test one uh, that is set up to come on five minutes after sunset and turn our Merlin uh, RX on. Um, so pretty easy to set up the automations and a lot that you can do with it for different programming. Um, if it were me, what I would do is set up all of your devices that you want to come on at sunset under one program. So you have a sunset program and that turns all the devices on that you want to come on at sunset. Um, and then anything like the, <coughs> excuse me, the Merlin RX that needs a, a bit of a delay, have a second one for that. And then again, for the off time, uh, if you want anything coming off at midnight, it's all under one, you have a, a bedtime program. Uh, so at bedtime here, let's go in and see what I have here. Uh, so I go to bed nice and early at 1130 every day. It's going to turn my smart socket off and it's going to turn my Merlin uh, switch off. So um, that's into setting up uh, automations. What you can also do is set up a tap to run. Um, and this is just something that you can easily put on the screen uh, for the homeowner. So I, I do a tap to run like with an all on, all off. Uh, and I set that up usually. It, it just makes it easy for them if they want to just you know one button and turn all their lights on. They don't have to go into each device individually. Um, I set a tap to run for all on and a tap to run for all off. So I just turn the smart socket on and turn the, uh, the Olympic camera off on. And I, I have an all off as well. Okay, um, now setting up, uh, if I was a contractor setting this up and uh, setting it up for a family, generally speaking, I wouldn't want to use their phone. I, I don't want to take their phone from their hands and I don't want to be using it for an hour um, you know, with their phone calls and their messages coming through. Uh, much easier and cleaner for me if I do the setup on my own phone. Um, so you go into the home management um, and you can create a home. So 
Uh, you can see I'm uh, a member of a, a few different homes uh, that I've either set up or helped uh, with troubleshooting. Um, but create a new home, uh, enter the home name and the location, um, set any different rooms. Now you can set like front yard, backyard as, uh, as different rooms. You can set, uh, um, you know, the uh, outdoor kitchen as a different room uh, and set that up in here when you're creating a home. So I would set up a home for the customer, you know, Jones residence, uh, we have uh, Schoendorf, Harrison, Gold, um, set up a home for the customer. Um, and then when you're done, add them in as an administrator. So again, you go into home management. Um, and if I go into the Jones residence here, uh, so now I'm in the home management. Um, so Illumis Mart at IllumiCareGroup.com uh, is a homeowner and I've got two administrators uh, uh, here that I've added in. I would add the homeowner in as an administrator, just click on add member. It's helpful if they have already set up an, uh, an account in the app. So have them download the app, set up an account. Uh, easier to add them in that way and just click on app account. Uh, make a name for them and then type in either the email or the phone number that they use to set up the account. Um, so I can add um, Raymond in right now. I can add Raymond and uh, I think you used your Did I? and uh, typo. That's, uh, I did, John. John usually can mess up my uh, my lighting at any given time he likes. <laughs> so I'm adding uh, Raymond in here. Um, so I can decide if he's going to be a common member or I can make him an administrator. Um, and that's will send an, uh, it'll send an invitation to Raymond on his phone. And <clears throat> excuse me, once he accepts, uh, Raymond becomes an administrator. Uh, you can see on my phone here, it's waiting for Raymond to join. So once he joins, he's an administrator. So once I've added the homeowner as administrator on, uh, on his own residence, shown him how to use everything, what I would do then is transfer home ownership and give him, uh, basically give him the home. So now he's the, uh, the, the grand poobah, if you will, um, and uh, he's, he's running his home. Um, up to you and him, whether you want to stay on as an administrator, I would recommend that at least for the first little while, if he's got any issues, uh, he can call you up. And if you're an administrator, you can pop in, um, you know, uh, pop into your, your app. You can go into your home management and see, you know, um, I, I can go in and, uh, uh, who do I want to mess with here? Um, you know, go in and, uh you know, see what's going on with their system. I can check their smart setups. I can check their devices. Uh, we've got a device offline here. Um, so I can do some troubleshooting right from there. So I recommend you do that at least at the beginning. Um, and, and then uh, when uh, he or she wants, um, they can just, uh, when they're comfortable using it, they can just remove you from, from the home. Oops. And management go to Jones, and then um, when they want, they can just uh, remove member and take them out of the home. So if I was a contractor, that's how I would be setting things up. Um, it, easier, cleaner for me to do the programming on my phone, get everything working well, and then uh, just add them in as a, an administrator and transfer the ownership to them. Um, and uh, like I said, I would stay in as, as an administrator for at least a little while. Um, you can also remove yourself from a home um, and then let them run with that afterwards. So kind of going through things a little quickly here, I'm hoping everybody's picking that up. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else I wanna cover in the app there that covers uh, the, the most of it. Um, let's see here. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, so hopefully uh, we're, we're getting most of it there. I'm going to um, actually uh, open up and uh, take some questions if uh, questions have been coming in through the chat that I haven't, uh, I haven't answered through the, um, through the discussion here. Um, Paul Goslin was asked, I was wondering, I think that's where you might see some of the questions from Paul forward. Uh, Paul was wondering how much does uh, RRX use on the secondary side? Um, sorry, how many watts does it consume? Yeah. Uh, it, it consumes, it, it's less than one watt. Paul, I hope that answered your question. If not, well, then- well it's, uh, sitting, well, it's sitting idle. Yes. And uh, I guess James had a question, why would the homeowner not be set up as the homeowner? Or what is the difference between homeowner and an admin? So there, there can only be one homeowner. So because you're creating the home, you are the homeowner because you've created it. So when you add them in, you would have to add them in as an administrator and then transfer the home ownership to them. So then they will be the homeowner and you will become an administrator. Um, so the basic difference is an administrator can go in and they can change all the programming. Uh, they can look at the programs, they can add and subtract devices, but they can't control users. The homeowner can control users. They can add, um, add new users and make them account administrators. So um, when you set up a home, you are the homeowner add them in as an administrator and then make them the homeowner. You're kind of transferring it over to them. You can only have one homeowner at a time, so you can't add them in immediately as a homeowner. You have to add them in as an administrator first and then transfer the home ownership. All right. And uh, as far as our app working in uh, Turks and Caicos or in uh, Bermuda, Bahamas, uh, uh, anywhere outside of North America? I thought you were going on a Beach Boys thing there. <laughs> <laughs> there should um, be no problem bermuda bahamas come on pretty no um uh yeah it is is no problem it'll work anywhere in the world once you do the programming it's all in the cloud uh so you can use it anywhere in the world and uh it'll uh it, it'll work fine okay and uh Water intrusion, warranty, water intrusion into the RX remote waterproof. Uh, so yeah, good question. The uh, the the RX is uh, is IP67 rated, um, so it, it is a sealed unit, completely and encapsulated. Um, so it's uh, it's good to go outside, like next to the transformer. I wouldn't bury it, um, but mostly for the reason that uh, it's got antennas. Uh, and when you bury an antenna, you kind of uh, stop the signal. Um, but other than that, yeah, you can go outside and go next to the transformer, you can go on a, on a wall, it can go on a, uh, you know, the post of a gazebo um, and anything. I can just see people thinking about this, burying it and leaving the antenna out. That the... You know, I, <laughs> to each your own, I don't recommend, it's not rated for direct burial. I'll say that if you're gonna bury it, put it in a valve box. Um, but when you bury something with an antenna, you kind of uh, choke the signal off a little bit. I haven't tested the RF signal uh, through earth. So uh, I've tested it through walls and glass and brick and wood and stuff, but not, not through earth. Okay. Any other questions coming up? I think we've covered all the questions that were here so far. Uh, the remote is uh, the remote is not waterproof. No, uh, the remote is is not a uh, is not a sealed unit, but the RX is uh, is waterproof. Thanks, Zach. I just saw that there. John, I was just dealing with something, and uh, might as well while we are on, it might be uh, uh, it might be useful to others as well. I had a contractor I was talking to this morning, and. Uh, uh, they have two remotes on the job site and uh, they were able to use one of them, but not the other. Would, would there be uh, one that overrides the other or how does that work? 
you have yes, to you can only use one remote at a time uh, with the Merlin. It can only pair with one remote. Uh, it, that's you know it's getting a a signal that's pairing with a with a device, so you can repair with a different remote, uh, but you can only use one remote at a time. Okay, thank you, John. So hopefully you've uh, kind of understand the uh, the Merlin uh, RX system uh, a little more. Um, but, you know, we introduced this product a, a little while ago. Um, we brought the uh, the Merlin Hub in uh, last year um, to the to the system, um, just because we we knew that what the limitations of Wi-Fi was and wanted to get a way to go beyond that. Um, so, you know, with with the addition of the hub, you've got the Wi-Fi control, the programming through the app, um, but at a distance of up to uh, uh, up to a thousand feet. Possibly a little beyond, but uh, we we were conservative in our ratings and rated at a thousand feet. Um, I should also mention the uh, the RX is rated at twenty five amps, uh, so you can run a full three hundred watts um, on that uh, on that uh, Merlin RX. Um, so you know, good distance, uh, lots of power, um, and it's really a robust system that works uh, uh, just works really well and uh, very reliably. And it's, it, it runs on the 2.4? It runs on 2.4 gigahertz, yes. Uh, I, actually, I'm surprised that didn't come up. <coughs> Excuse me. For the Wi-Fi, it runs on 2.4 gigahertz. Um, and for the radio frequency, it's 433 megahertz. Um, now, you know, 433 megahertz, uh, lower, um, uh, lower transmission, lower um, signal, but it goes further. And that's why we use the 2.4 gigahertz, not the five gigahertz. Um, there's a difference in the Wi-Fi signals and everybody is thinking five gigahertz is, uh, is the best. Um, five gigahertz is great for speed uh, and for bandwidth. So you get a lot of data really quickly. We don't need a lot of data. We're transmitting bytes at a time for the on off signals and we don't need a lot of speed. It's a small amount of data and it can go slowly. Um, so that's not what we need. What we need is distance and 2.4 gigahertz has a better um, distance and better at going through structures, going through walls than five gigahertz does. Uh, so that's why pretty much every uh, Wi-Fi um, like smart device on the market uses 2.4 gigahertz because uh, we don't need the speed and the bandwidth of the five gigahertz. What we need is the further distance of the 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, and again, the even lower frequency on the RF, the 433 megahertz uh, with an even longer distance. So, you know, we, we've looked at it and we can do a, a hybrid system again, we can connect to five gigahertz, but uh, we're really limiting then our, our capacity for, you know, mounting them outside, mounting them in the transformer, mounting them in a pool shed, because uh, that signal is just not going to make it as well. Okay. And uh, you, you were saying that uh, only one remote, one uh, uh, TX remote at a time can work on a, on a site? Yes. Uh, now you can use, you can put multiple RXs on one remote. You can, uh, each, um, uh, each transmitter um, will control up to, uh, uh, up to eight, different, uh, eight, eight different zones. Um, that's probably not showing up there. Uh, but each, each transmitter can control up to eight zones. Uh, whereas the, the hub is, is six zones. Um, but yes, one, one remote per. <clears throat> and if I'm using my phone to control, which uh, majority will, uh, how many RXs, different RXs can I control from a phone? Uh, 194. Okay. That's a lot of zones. That is a lot of zones. That's a nice job. Yeah. That'd be a little complicated for the programming. Yeah, um, and the, the issue that you'd have there is you'd be killing your Wi-Fi because you'd have too many devices connected for most hubs. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Paul wants that project. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Me, um, me, me laugh for a new barbecue. Yeah. 
So that's all. Uh, that's all that I have for you folks today, and hopefully you've uh, gained some insight into the, uh, the the Merlin, and um, you know can see where it can fit into uh, a, a project. And um, like I said, is really a robust system. And um, if you need something to solve a problem, if you need uh, uh, something to get that uh, that extra distance, uh, you know th this is your answer with the convenience of of Wi-Fi programming. John, Zach asked a question of uh, say I hook up four RX units. How can I tell the difference between one and four? Um, sorry, how can you tell the difference in the app or because um, in in the app, I mean, if you hook up four different ones, uh, you just you you can just rename them. So I've got the Illumicare Merlin here, um, and uh, actually, let me sorry, I'm, let me go back to my phone. on the phone there i'm not on the phone yet okay now i'm getting technical a bit I forgot. there we go okay and is it working okay i'm going to switch over and share on my ipad on my iphone Sorry guys, just getting in here. Okay. So when you're, um, if you're adding different uh, different devices, uh, you, you basically would just change the name. So instead of uh, Lumicare Merlin here, um, I'm gonna change the name of this and I'm gonna make this one my, uh, uh, my cabana. Um, so you, you tell the difference just by, by giving him a different name, you giving him a zone one, two, three, four, um, or just changing, uh, changing the names in there, uh, make it whatever you want. Hope that answered uh, the question, Zach. All right. So I want to thank everyone uh, for attending today. Um, you know, feel free to reach out uh, Raymond, Anthony, or I if you have any questions uh, going forward. Uh, this uh, re, uh, this uh, webinar was being recorded, and uh, hopefully we're going to get this up on YouTube, so uh, you can refer back to it if you uh, if you have any information that you think you might have missed. So uh, thanks everyone, and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you down the road. Thank you all. Thank you, John. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.